Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Nairam Shavanarotamam Devyam Sarasvatim Vyasa Tatu Jayam Mudirayat before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Naranarayan, unto Naranarayan Risi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Pareshu Abhradreshu Nicham Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance in the classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead who's praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. We're reading from the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Uh, let's see where we're reading from. Huh. 75th chapter, 1 to 30, right? So when you read 1 to 30, do you just read 30 or do you read all 1 to 30? Okay, so we're going to I've been instructed to read the translations 1 to 30, and then when we hit 30, we'll do the word by word, Sanskrit. Okay, is this marked? Anyone want to find the page? <laughs> you know, uh, I just want to say that there's a, this app that's been created by the VBT called Transcendence. Oh, does someone want to translate into Hindi, or is that being done? That's being done. Okay. I will speak more slowly. So this Transcendence app, is bit, there's something new that's been introduced to it that's quite amazing. And that is that there's an AI function. And the AI function normally will reference everything that's on the web. But in the app, what they've done is they've limited the AI function to everything that Prabhupada has spoken and written. So now when you have a question, you know, uh, who was Sanakarishi? Then only it will reference Prabhupada's uh, writings and lectures and letters. So that you have a very confined but definitive way of understanding our philosophy through our acharya only. Now, our acharya also references some other acharyas, but only those references would be uh, accessible, not other references of those acharyas, which means only the words of those acharyas that Prabhupada has translated for us are available. So that gives a very unique context because just like I'm reading this 1075, but that's not Prabhupada's words. These are the words of, of Gopi Puranadana, mainly, Prabhu, mainly, and Kridayananda Goswami, who was uh, helping him. I was actually blessed because Gopi Puranadan was staying at my house in 1980 with his then wife, Dukkha Hantri, and he was doing this, these translations at that time. And I can tell you from personal association that he was extremely dedicated, uh, his sadhana was very good, he was single-minded with his duty to carry on the sacred work of Srila Prabhupada. In other words, I was 
feeling, oh, how have I deserved such uh, association with a very saintly person? And that was the mood in which he was doing this translating. And in, it's very interesting because in 1 to 30, um, if you look at this Krishna book, he's actually taken Prabhupada's Krishna book and used that as the uh, almost 90% of the words that you read from 1 to 30. And as everyone knows, the Krishna book that Prabhupada wrote and was, was published by the uh, aegis of George Harrison, that book is the only book that the tapes of the trans, of, of Prabhupada's using the dictaphone are still existing because most of the tapes were reused and reused because we didn't want to spend, we did not want to spend money on more tapes. So those tapes you can refer, they're in the, they're in the, the Bhakti Vedanta archives and you can go to, you can reference them online. And they are transcribed from Prabhupada's words and you can check. The, the Prabhupada's words are those words. It's the only, because all the other uh, transcriptions are not available. So now you, you, know, you either have the 1972 Bhagavad Gita as it is, which was approved by Prabhupada, sanctioned by Prabhupada, or you have the later editions, 1983 onward, that, of course, Prabhupada never got a chance to approve. And author means what? Comes authorization. The author is the authorizing agent. So it's, it's very wonderful that at least I noticed these chapters are almost verbatim from Krishna book. And therefore you can pretty much count on them. Otherwise, caveat emptor, You've got to, every time, when, when Prabhupada's books have been edited or when uh, he hasn't translated, like the 10th, less after 10.3 and uh, up to the 12th, through the 12th canto, one has to always consider that. You have to consider, you have to be intelligent. You have to consider that you don't have the same facility as having Prabhupada present in his, in his vapu form. And therefore, you, your, your journey as the next generations is far more, you have far more responsibilities than we did. We we're just like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. Whatever you say, even though we didn't understand everything. Even though we didn't even ask all the right questions, so many questions we didn't ask. So, anyway. We're reading the first three chapters, so let's begin. So text one to two. Mars Brickett said, O Brahman, according to what I've heard from you, all the assembled kings, sages, and demigods were delighted to see the wonderful festivities of King Ajata Sutra's Raza Suja sacrifice with the sole exception of Duryodhana. Please tell me why this was so, my Lord. So he's speaking to Sukadeva Goswami as my Lord. And Sri Bhadarayani said, another name for Sukadeva. At the Rasa Suja sacrifice of your saintly grandfather, his family members, bound by their love for him, engaged themselves in humble services on his behalf. And there's a short, short purport by his by uh, Gopi Pranadana Hridananda, but it's really from Prabhupada's Krishna book. King Yudhisthira did not force his relatives to accept different tasks at the sacrifice. Rather, out of their love for him, they volunteered for such service. 
Next, text seven. Bhima supervised the kitchen. Duryodhan looked after the treasury, while Sahadev respectfully greeted the arriving guests. Nakula procured needed items. Arjuna attended the respectable elders. And Krishna washed everyone's feet. While Draupadi served food and generous Karna gave out the gifts. Many others, such as Yayudan, Bikarna, Hardikya, Vidura, Burishrava, and other sons of Balika and Satandana similarly volunteered for various duties during the elaborate sacrifice. They did so out of their eagerness to please Maharaj Yudhisthira, O best of kings. It was just spontaneous. Can you imagine Bhima supervising the kitchen? You wouldn't want to disobey anything Bhima said in the kitchen. Text eight. After the priests, the prominent delegates, the greatly learned saints, and the king's most intimate well-wishers had all been properly honored with pleasing words, auspicious offerings, and various gifts at remuneration, as remuneration. And after the king of Seti had entered the lotus feet of the lord of the Sattvatas, the Avabrita bath was performed in the divine river, Jamuna. And the Jamuna in those days was considered the Ganges. The Ganga, the Jamuna, they were considered like the same. Purport, the gifts offered to the distinguished guests included valuable jewelry. It really sounds very materialistic, doesn't it? You know, getting gifts and food and all the stuff being... But I'll explain a little bit later how to see that from the spiritual point of view. Text 10. Female dancers danced with great joy and choruses sang while the loud vibrations of venas and flutes and hand cymbals reached all the way to the heavenly regions. Sounds like a, a rave of some kind. You know, it's like, it's like a Co Coachella Festival in, in, uh, in Palm Springs. It's like, it's like this big deal going on. It's heard, of, just like we hear about some of these festivals, we hear about them around the world. So this is heard all the way to the heavenly kingdoms. Text 11, all the kings wearing gold necklaces then set off for the Jamuna. They had flags and banners of various colors and were accompanied by infantrymen and well-adorned soldiers riding lordly elephants, chariots, and horses. So, you know, in one sense, what would you expect? If God is present, if Krishna is present, then you would expect to be opulences everywhere. Just like when, you know, heads of state arrive, you know, and they, they get off the airplane and there's this military salute and red carpets and, and all kinds of gifts bestowed, you know, that's carried on in today's world. But what to speak of Krishna being there? Of course, of course, not everybody who was present knew that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because Krishna was present, 
All the opulences were there. More on that later. Text 13. The assembled officials, the priests, and other excellent Brahmins resoundedly vibrated Vedic mantras while the demigods, divine sages, pittas, and gandharvas sang praises and rained down flowers. Again, just imagine the, the pageantry of this occasion. It's, it's, you know, it's celestial. There's flowers descending from the heavenly planets and choruses of beautiful music. You can't, we can't even absorb how much beauty. When we look at the deity, we say, oh, Sri Sri Radha Ras Bihari is so beautiful today. <laughs> Listen to what we're hearing, the opulences that are given when Krishna is present. Text 14, men and women, all adorned with sandalwood paste. I have a little spot on each side of my heart, but they're all adorned with it. You can imagine. Flower garlands. I got one of those. Jewelry. I have a wedding ring. And fine clothing supported by smearing and sprinkling one another with various liquids. Now, this is getting a little bit, what, what's going on here? They're, 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 they're touching each other. This is, this is, how is this spiritual, right? We're going to have to look into that as we go down the lane of these verses. But for now, just accept it. Just accept that there's a spiritual component there. Uh, text 11. We got, we got to get up to 30. All the kings wearing gold necklaces then set off for the Jamuna. They had flags and banners of various colors and were accompanied by infantrymen and well-adorned soldiers riding lordly elephants, chariots, and horses. Text 12, the massed armies of the Yadus, the Shunjayas, Kambojas, the Kurus, the Kekayas, and the Koshalas made the earth tremble. Yudhisthir Maharaj, the performer of the sacrifice, was in the procession. They followed him. He was at the head of the procession of all of this pageantry which is almost unimaginable. You know, where, where was there a big enough space for all this? And you don't forget, Yudhisthira himself was, he was a Jai Shri Shri, Gordon Tai Shri Shri, Radharas Bihari Shri Shri, Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman. The assembly officials, the priests, and other excellent Brahmins resoundedly vibrated Vedic mantras, while the demigods, divine sages, Pitas and Gandharvas sang praises and rained down flowers. Text 14, men and women, all adorned with sandalwood paste, flower garlands, jewelry, and fine clothing, sported by smearing and sprinkling each other with various liquids, and the men smeared the courtians with plentiful oil and yogurt, perfumed water, turmeric, and kumkum powder. And all the courtesans playfully smeared the men with the same substances. There's a purport here, so I'm going to read the purport that my godbrothers wrote. And, and they just quote Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada describes this scene as follows. The men and women of Indraprastha, their bodies smeared with scents and floral oils, were nicely dressed in colorful garments and decorated with garlands, jewels, and ornaments. They were all enjoying the ceremony, and they threw on each other liquid substances like water, oil, milk, butter, and yogurt. Some even smeared them 
on each other's bodies. In this way, they were enjoying the occasion. The, now, here's, here's what's really interesting. The professional prostitutes were also engaged by jubilantly smearing these liquid substances on the bodies of the men. And the men reciprocated. The men reciprocated in the same way. Oh my God, what's going on? How do we understand this? One of our four regulated principles we know is no illicit sex. And then we have so many rules about men and women and separating the sexes. And men are like butter, women are like fire. And they're smearing each other with what? With pro pro they're smearing prostitutes with liquid substances. And all the liquid substances have been mixed with turmeric and saffron, so it's really colorful. And the color was an, a, a, a lustrous yellow. It, it's just like, how do I, how do I, where do I put that in my Krishna conscious lockbox? How do I hold that? We'll read on. Text 16. Surrounded by guards. Why does he need guards? Yudas, King Yudasthir's queens, why do they need guards? Queens came out on their chariots to see the fun, just as the demigods' wives appeared in the sky in celestial airplanes. It's a big show. As maternal cousins and intimate friends sprinkled the queens with liquids, the ladies' faces bloomed with shy smiles, enhancing the queen's splendid beauty. This is like some romance novel we're reading here. There was some, it's like a rom-com you'd watch on, you know, Sony TV or something. What's going on here? Purport, the maternal cousins refer to here are Lord Krishna and such brothers of his as Gada and Sarana and the friends mentioned are such persons as Bhima and Arjun. I guess Gopi Pranadan and Hridayan also didn't have much to say about that. Where do we go with that? As the queen squirted water from syringes, you've seen those paintings with those big syringes full of colored water that the devotees have painted. You remember them? They're there in the in the, in the Krishna art book. As the queen squirted water from syringes at their brothers-in-law and other male companions, their own garments became drenched. Okay, this is, this is getting interesting. Revealing their arms, their breasts, thighs, and waists. By these charming pastimes, they agitated those with contaminated consciousness. So if you get agitated by reading this, you'll, you're one of them. Purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, such behavior, okay, we're going to get a little perspective on the behavior now. Such behavior between pure males and females is enjoyable. But persons who are materially contaminated become lustful. Okay, now we get a hint as to how this is going on. It is a function of how we see it through our consciousness. And I'm going to give you a little hint how I've been able to reconcile this kind of description, these kinds of activities with the spirituality that we profess to uh, promote through austerities. And that is this. And I hope this works for you because it certainly works for me. 
Do you remember when you were a kid? A kid means you didn't go through puberty. You, you, you had not grown, you had not, the hormones had not started being, were not secreted and pulsating in your body. Remember when you were just a kid and you would play with other kids? You were six, you were seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Puberty is happening a little earlier these days, but remember those days? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you would play. And you would play with girls and you would play with boys. And you didn't care if they were of the other gender. You were just having fun, wasn't it? It wasn't important to you. In fact, sometimes your best friend was a girl or your best friend was a boy or your best buddy was your brother or your sister. And all of that stuff that we experience once those hormones get secreted, it doesn't have any effect on our consciousness because we're not in that consciousness. So when you hear these pastimes, think to yourself, pure, what does pure mean? Pure means not contaminated by lust. What is lust? The desire to control. Lust, the all-devouring enemy, Krishna says. But with children, it doesn't really exist. And if it does exist in some children, it's very abnormal. It's not normal. There are always exceptions to everything. But if you can put yourself into that space of purity, of your childhood, of how you played, you didn't even care if a person was black, white, Indian, Aboriginal, anything. It didn't matter as long as they were fun to be with and you could play games. There's a, there was an a experiment in, in a, I read about that children didn't even know when their parents said, oh, that boy is black. In America, they were playing. And said, what does that mean? I don't see it. They don't even see each other in that way. They're, they're playing soul to soul in, 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 as closely as you can while still being in a material body. So think of that purity of youth, not of teenage youth, but just as Krishna is existing in Vrindavan somewhere between the ages of 8 and 12, that's his eternal age. So similarly, all these pastimes are going on in that purity of consciousness. And if we think of it like that, then we begin to understand these verses much more easily, much more easily. Next verse. The emperor mounted upon his chariot, drawn by excellent horses, wearing golden collars, appeared splendid in the company of his wives, just like the brilliant Raj Rajasuya sacrifice surrounded by its various rituals. Purport, King Yudhisthira, with his queens, appeared like the personified Rajasuya sacrifice surrounded by its beautiful rituals. A little over my, you know, my pay grade to quite understand what that means. In other words, Yudhisthira appeared like the personified Rajasuya sacrifice. In other words, if we just looked at Yudhisthira, it was like you would have the experience of seeing the whole pageantry. He was that, his purity, his stature, his love, everything was so brilliant that it couldn't get more brilliant. Text 19, the priests led by the king through the execution of the final rituals of the Patni Samyajana and Ababritya. Then they had him and Queen Draupadi sip water for purification and bathe in the Ganges. The Ganges, the Jamuna, same thing in those days. That's how it was understood. 
Text 20, the kettle drums of the gods resounded along with those of human beings, demigods, sages, forefathers, and humans all poured down showers of flowers. Now you notice how flowers play such a big role in our Krishna conscious life. Ever notice that? You know, flowers like a big deal. Flower gardens, creating flower gardens for the Lord is a big thing. Flowers are very much present in our material world as a reflection of the flowers in the spiritual world. And I come from the flower generation. That's what they called us. Because we didn't know about Krishna. We didn't know about anything about these pastimes, etc. But we knew one thing. Flowers e e exhibit the beauty of the creator. Flowers, their, their colors, their scents, everything about a flower, their softness. To us, it was natural that we would become known as the flower generation. And the greatest, one of the greatest uh, of the songs that we, the lyrics of a song was back to the garden. And all those things, those inputs from hints that we got when we came across Prabhupada's books, that all came together. Garden, the garden of Vrindavan, the flowers, the offerings, the love, the pastimes, the purity, the lack of lust, all of that had been prepared for us because we understood the beauty behind what must be the creating these flowers. So, flower generation. Uh, text 21. All the citizens belonging to the various orders of Varna and ashram then bathed in that place where even the most grievous sinner can immediately be freed from all sinful reactions. So people understood in those days that they were contaminated. How do we know that they were contaminated by reading these verses? Because many of them did not understand Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They didn't know that God was present among them. Some did, most did not. So they were thinking, how can I be purified? I will bathe myself in the cleansing waters of the Ganges. Text 22, next the king put on new silken garments and adorned himself with fine jewelry. He then honored the priests, the assembly officers, the learned Brahmins and other guests by presenting them with ornaments and clothing. Purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, the king not only dressed himself and decorated himself, but he also gave clothing and ornaments to all the priests and to all the others who had participated in the yagna. In this way, he worshipped them all. These days, we get a, uh, we get one of those little, those ribbons they put around our neck, you know, if you go to a, a yagna. What is that called? I don't know the name. Pavitra, yeah, Pavitra. We get a Pavitra and a little dakshin. <laughs> those days. And maybe we, maybe we get a chatter. So, you know, that's also a thing. But that's a remnant of this kind of uh, hospitality, respect, exchange of gifts. Uh, even in our tradition, we, we know, according to the Bhakti Rasamruta Sindhu, that in order to express and exchange, have a loving exchange, one of those ways is to exchange gifts with one another. Another one is to reveal one's mind. There's different exchanges, but gifts is one of them. And to the credit of the management of this temple, they have carried that tradition on, always giving gifts 
whether it's Prasad or Pavitras or whatever books, to people who have made attempts to come here and participate in yagnas or to give dakshin or whatever it is. And every day this temple gives free prasadam to whomever comes because that is following in the best way we can in this age of Kali, this tradition. Text 23, in various ways, King Yudhisthira, who had totally dedicated his life to Lord Narayan, continuously honored his relatives, his immediate family, and the other kings, his friends, and well-wishers, and all others present as well. Nobody was left behind. Everybody got something. Text 24, all the men there shone like demigods. They were adorned with jeweled earrings, flower garlands, turbans, waistcoats, silk dhotis, and valuable pearl necklaces. The lovely faces of the women were beautified by their matched earrings and locks of hair, and they, were, they all wore golden belts. Now, before you begin to think, gee, that sounds like a, you know, kind of egotistical. They got to have all these adorn, you know, uh, 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 the, uh, ad what are they called? Um, ad uh, all these, uh, all these adornments, or whatever, all these clothes and accessories. You have to remember, look at, look at how renounced Yudhisthira was capable of becoming. After the war of Kuksetra, everybody had died. Right? And he and his brothers eventually set off for Badrak Ashram with nothing, just depending on Krishna. He was capable of this great opulence, but he was not attached, as evidenced by his various activities. Text 25 to 26, then the highly cultured priests, the great Vedic authorities who had served as sacrificial witnesses, the specially invited kings, the Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Sudras, demigods, sages, forefathers, and let us not forget the mystic spirits. Who are the mystic spirits? I remember Prabhupada told us when we went to Kumamela for the first time, he said, be kind and careful with every living being here. Many of the mystic yogis come as birds to the Kumbh. Me, Kumbh. So who are those mystic spirits? They're great yogis. And the chief planetary rulers and their followers, all of them have been being worshipped by King Yudhisthira took his permission and then departed, O king, each for his own abode. I don't know who was running the universe. Everybody was there. If, you know, they, were, they were absent from all their managerial positions. Text 28. At that time, Raja Yudhisthira, King Yudhisthira, stopped a number of his friends, immediate family members, and other relatives from departing. Among them, Lord Krishna. Out of love, Yudhisthira could not let them go, for he felt the pain of immediate separation, vipralamba. He felt that pain of vipralamba. That vipralamba is the essence of developing love for Krishna. It is a theme that resounds throughout all of Krishna's pastimes. And one devotee recently said to me, he said, I felt so infused with the spirit of Krishna consciousness for two and a half years. I just, I just was in bliss. And now I don't feel anything, anything at all. 
What's going on? I said, oh, welcome to that club. Welcome to the club of separation of Vipralamba. That is Lord Chaitanya's gift. Relish that gift that we have to serve in separation because that gift gives you the highest taste of the love of the gopis for Krishna. If you nurture that and you don't stop your sadhana, that is the gift that you will see gives you the highest taste. And so here Yudhisthira was, he was feeling, oh my God, because the, even with Radha and Krishna, there's, there's a raga that when, we're, when they're together, it's a certain raga. And then when they're thinking, oh, we have to be apart, and there's another raga, just thinking about it. Then when they have to part, there's another raga for that. And then we're totally apart, there's another raga for that. And then when they're totally apart and they're thinking, when will we be together again, there's another raga for that. And then when they start going together, to meet each other again, there's another raga for that. And then when they're together, there's a raga for that. It's the mellows of devotional service. It is not static. It is, not, it is dynamic. And we have to learn how to nurture that in our devotional service. So I told this devotee, I said, you're a lucky man. You had that taste for two and a half years. I only had that for, you know, three, four months. Some people only get it for a moment. You had it for two and a half years, you lucky dog. <laughs> and I know that those of you who sit before me with bead bags around your neck or living in the temple, you've tasted what I'm talking about. It's common to all of us every single one of us, because we are the lucky ones. We are the fortunate few. I don't know for myself why I was so fortunate. And you can maybe figure it out for yourself, but I'll just take it from that principle of a chincha. It's inconceivable. Inconceivable kripa. That's what it is. That's as far as I can say, because I am most undeserving of any mercy. What to speak of the mercy that Srila Prabhupada sprinkled out on the generation of hippies, love generation, flower generation, and where it fell, you just have to accept. Okay, we're on text 29. My dear Parikshit, the Supreme Lord remained there for some time to please the king after first sending Samba and the other Yadu heroes back to Dwarka. Text 30. We're here. And we've made it before 9 o'clock. Thus, oh, Itam Raja Dharma, Itam Raja Dharman Suto, Manorata Maharmanavam. Sutrustaram samutriya krishne sikata jivraha. Someone do that better than me. Itam raja dharma suto. Manorata maharanam. Sutrustaram samutriya. Krishna Ashid Katadvara. Come on. Itam Raja Dharman Suto. Manorata Mahar Navam. Sutustaram Samutriya. Krishna Shad Gata Jiraha
Itam Raja Dharmam Suto Manoratha Mahar Navam Sutastaram Sumutriya Krishna Yalkataj Viraha Maharajis Itam Raja Dhamar Suto Manuram Maharanam Sum Tastaram Sumutriya Vinaya Gadadvaraha Itam In this manner, Raja, the king, Dharma, of the Lord of Religion, Yamaraj, Sutaha, the son, Manarata, of his desires, Maha, huge, Arnavam, the ocean, Shu, very, Dustaram, difficult to cross, Sumutriya, successfully crossing Krishnena to the agency of Lord Krishna Ashit he became Gata Dvaraha freed of his feverish condition translation and purport by Prabhupada's disciples Thus, King Yudhisthir, the son of Dharma, was at last relieved of his burning ambition, having by the grace of Lord Krishna successfully crossed the vast and formidable ocean of his desires. Purport. The previous chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam clearly explain that King Yudhisthira intensely desired to demonstrate to the world the supremacy of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the blessings received by those who surrender to him. To do this, King Yudhisthira performed the Rajasuya sacrifice, a very difficult task. Srila Prabhupada writes in this connection, in this material world, everyone has a particular type of desire to be fulfilled. But one is never able to fulfill his desires to his full satisfaction. But King Yudhisthira, because of his unflinching faith, uh, flinching devotion to Krishna, could fulfill all desires successfully by performance of the Rajasuya sacrifice. From the description of the Rajasuya sacrifice, Yagna, it appears that such a function is a great ocean of opulent desires. It is not possible for an ordinary man to cross over such an ocean. Nevertheless, by the grace of Lord Krishna, King Yudhisthira was able to cross over it very easily, and thus he became freed from all anxieties. Thus, King Yudhisthira, the son of Dharma, was at last relieved of his burning ambition, having by the grace of Lord Krishna successfully crossed the vast and formidable ocean of his desires. And what was his intense desire? What was that intense desire? the world to show yes to show the world 
that the Supreme Personality of Godhead was Krishna, was Krishna. His desire was a hundred percent spiritual desire. And Prabhupada uses this example as both a material example and a spiritual example. I have a lot to say about our desire to serve Krishna, each and every one of us, because many of us have ambitions to serve Krishna, which can be construed or even maybe coming from a material point of view. But just like putting uh, the um, iron into the fire, whatever you put into that fire, that iron will become as red hot as that fire. Whatever desire you have will become spiritualized by the contact with Krishna. And therefore, we can have so many ambitions and pursue those ambitions as long as we do that within the context of our Krishna conscious philosophy and practice. And therefore, Krishna will satisfy that desire so that we will feel completely satisfied. And now I want to just touch on a recent thing that happened so you can see how that actually manifest in the life of our dear departed Hari Das. Hari Das had so much desire to serve Krishna. And his desire manifest in his wanting to spread Krishna consciousness all over Mumbai and India and the world through his ITV work. And Krishna did some magic to make that happen. And I'm going to share one little story before we ask for comments or we close because it's five after nine. When he had obtained enough money to carry on, he got onto Colors, he got onto Sony, we had Darshans, Prabhachans, people were tuning in to this temple from all over Mumbai, and then to all over India, wherever this was carried. And then in 1998, he ran out of money and everything got turned off. And nobody came and said, I'm willing to spend the one lakh per month that it takes to keep ITV India on the air. And Haridas didn't know what to do. He confided in his in our hurry, confided in our hurry. What to do? I, I'm, I'm not able to carry on. Narahari was talking to one donor, just shared the story of Hari Das's situation. And that donor said, tell Hari Das, I will pay that one lakh every month for this year. So ITV went back on the air, and every month that year carried forward, fulfilling Haridasa's desire. And then that donor said, I will do this year after year. And he did that until he passed away five years later. So don't ever doubt Krishna's present. He can fulfill all your desires. Just don't doubt it. There's so much evidence. And the evidence is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
And it's there amongst our own experiences. You just have to mine it from each other by sharing your mind with others and letting them reveal their mind to you. An exchange of Vaishnava affection and love. And in that way, you will get the proof. Hare Krishna. Grantara Shima Bhagavatam Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Pramanandi.